Greetings from the Scientific Committee of the Global Rhinology Network. I'm Ashok Rokade from Winchester and University Hospital, Southampton, UK. We are thrilled to welcome colleagues worldwide to our sixth live event in endoscopic sinus and skull base surgery. As a non-profit organization, we are all about advancing professional development led by surgeons for surgeons. Distinguished surgeons from across the globe are showcasing cutting edge techniques in this live event. With over 20,000 global delegates and growing viewership, it is generating quite a buzz. You can catch it now as a recording on our GRN Academy YouTube channel, highlighting individual clinical cases. For free access to our educational events and content, become a member of the GRN Academy by visiting www globalrhinology.org. Now let's kick off today's event with my co-host, Catherine Rennie from London. And big thanks to Medtronic and Carl Stolz for their strong support to our endeavor. So we have the third case now. Uh, I'll show you the slide. Let's put the slide to show you the history of this patient. So, so this patient has Samtus triad, chronic sinusitis, nasal polyps, and, uh, and asthma. 39 year old. She already had five previous operations. Uh, last one is the 2018. I heard you talking about the biologics. She's been on biologics, but the biologics helped her asthma, but not the polyps. And this is a specific one for polyps, the pilumab, which is again, it's IL-14, uh, uh, and it is supposed to be helping with the polyps. Just to show an, uh, an example, that biologics are not the magic for every case still. So she has not responded to various biologics, and currently she's the pilumab. The polyps are large, she's got facial pressure, she's got frontal headache, and she's got obstruction in the frontal ethmoidal recess with polyps also in the ethmoids. Uh, and she's also in betanozole drops because that's the only thing that was effective for her. Uh, so when we examined her, she had grade two polyps uh, in both sides. Uh, and she has some septal deviation, but interestingly, she had septal perforation before that we repaired. So I don't want to do too much to that septum. Let's show you the scan now with the next slide. Uh, so you can see the scans, the axial, the coronal, and the, and the, and the sagittal here. We don't show the, the axial. It, we show the parasagittal here to show the space, anteroposterior space uh, in the frontal sinus, which is nicely wide. So we should be able to get a nice uh, open uh, lothrop here. We'll do lothrop because we want to open these sinuses and we want to improve the drainage and we'll allow the medical treatment to reach into the frontal sinus, which causes her a lot of problems. So we're going to improve, uh, we're going to remove all these polyps and then do a lothrop. Uh, and I will, in the end, put a propel stent, which will secrete steroids for about a month, which is very useful in a patient like this who had multiple surgeries to try to actually improve the, the drainage in the lothrop and prevent any inflammatory changes during the uh, first healing period, in the first four weeks or so. So we'll go ahead with the case. I'll go on scrub, and then we'll see you during the case. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Hashem. Thank you. So interesting to use the propel stent in the frontal sinus there to give you a long term steroid um, slow release to hopefully keep that um, Lothrop cavity open for longer. Um, I've tried them in a few of the frontal sinuses and I found them quite useful. But again, um, they're expensive stents and people as alternatives in the past have used fashion silastic stents in order to keep that frontal drainage pathway open and using mucosal flaps locally can be quite helpful at trying to keep that frontal from closing down once you've drilled it out completely. Ashok, what techniques do you do to try and keep that big frontal recess wide open? I think I try to develop the local flaps. I think uh, they are important if you have uh, vascularized flaps. They tend to reduce the narrowing of the frontal ostium. Then also, in addition, you can also, in certain areas, use a free mucosal grafts, making sure that the mucosal site is uh, laid in correctly. So the combination of uh, flaps and uh, the grafts. So that's my technique. I don't necessarily pack it with anything. Certainly, I don't have any experience with focal stent. Which, uh, I have uh, heard about it, I've seen it. But uh, due to its cost and uh, relatively early, they are new, so I haven't really tried uh, anything. 
in my experience of that. So have, have you tried them? Yeah, so we've had, I've used a couple of Propel stents now for frontal sinus. I tend to use them in revision cases rather than primary just because of the cost issues within the NHS. So um, first time round, I don't get access to it. Whereas if they're having revision surgery, we want to do everything we can to try and keep that uh, frontal sinus as open as possible especially where there's been new osteoneogenesis and things like that happening. And maybe lots of the mucosa is involved in disease. So the mucosal flaps aren't as good as you perhaps want them to be. I know that um, Shaz Ahmed uses sometimes uh, nasopores um, soaked in betanazole to put in the cavity um, after surgery. I haven't tried that, but he finds that quite useful for slow release of betanazole after surgery. And as we were hearing from Dr. Jane earlier, he uses Maricel um, patties soaked in steroid for four days in the nose after all of his sinus surgery. So that's an interesting, similar thing. Um, rather than using a propel stent, something like that could also give you that local steroid immediately after the surgery. The propel is quite nice because it can hold your mucosal flaps in place and it sits in the frontal sinus opening really nicely. Um, we've looked at a few cases we've done at Imperial, and I think we're about to start a trial with them shortly. So it'll be interesting to see what the outcome is for, from the trial for it. But certainly the revision cases we've done with it, they have had um, some really nice results. And how long do you tend to leave them in? Oh, sorry, Ashok, I didn't quite catch that then. How, how long, long do you long... tend to leave tend to leave the propel stents? The propel stent uh, reabsorbs. So when we see them back for debridements in clinic, you can still see them at the two weeks. At the four weeks, you're beginning to see that it's broken down, um, but there's still bits of it left. Um, and then at the three months, the stent is reabsorbed. So you definitely see them there in the beginning. You can often see some mucus on the stent, but they are quite sit quite nicely in position. And the shape of them, um, uh, particularly the contour, is almost funnel shape, which kind of holds a graft in place quite nicely. And if you've got a very big um, frontal sinus opening, the Propel works quite nicely. But there's also a mini one if you're just doing a unilateral frontal sinus. So um, there are a few different options with them. I think they have three different types, the contour, the mini and the standard. So um, and as I say, you don't have to take them out, which is quite nice about them. They dissolve over time and they re slowly release mimetazone, which is um, obviously what we use in our nasal neck spray and really nice to help the mucosa heal and prevent that edema that you can get there. Yeah, so I think we try and all these measures to try and keep the uh, neofrontal ocean patent and as widely patent as it can be. Yeah. However, and I, uh, I don't want to... It does have it. Sorry. I don't want to sound like a salesperson for Medtronic. I want to let everybody know I'm not paid by them and I have no investment in the country, in the company at all. Absolutely. Same disclaimer for me. So, yeah. But uh, the point I was making that uh, whatever we do, all these measures are uh, supportive measures. Uh, but exactly. there is still a tendency for the neofrontal ocean to narrow down. So naturally, it narrows down by a third in a year's time. So there is, it is absolutely vital to make your first low crop cavity with the ideal shape, with going from skin to the skin laterally, then uh, anterior posterior diameter uh, opening is uh, important, drilling all that frontal plate, making it really thin, so you, you see it flat. So there should not be any ridges uh, along that side. Then uh, drilling it down further to your uh, uh, skull base, right up to the skull base, right up to the first olfactory neuron, making sure you're dealt with the interfrontal cell correctly, then reducing the interfrontal septum right uh, to its uh, uh, very end as much as possible. The shape of the cavity, and also not to forget uh, the uh, T, when the posterior septic, uh, uh, septal window that you create, the shape of that septal window. So all these things uh, matter. Absolutely, Ashok. These measures and the propels and things, they won't make up for poor surgery. And it's really important that you get the good as good a diameter to that um, lotharop cavity as you can at the first surgery and when you first open it up, because no amount of stero local steroid is going to 
um, keep it open on its own. It has to have been a good surgical procedure at first. But I think they're back on in London. So I will hand over to Professor Sala. He looks like he's just congesting, decongesting the nose with those uh, Maricel patties. Mm. So I'm just prepping the nose. It looks horrible here, very inflamed. So mm. I'm putting the topical adrenaline. It's very congested and it's very tight. So I just put it here and wait for a few minutes. As you all can notice, all these patties have a string attached to it. And, uh, we would not be allowed to use uh, the free patties uh, in the nose uh, from a safety point of view in our departments. We all have to have that uh, radio tracer and uh, also the uh, strings attached. So I'll count it before and after. Uh, this is just a safe surgical practice. So Hesham, can I ask, has this patient just prior to surgery had any oral steroids as a preoperative prior to no. surgery? And do you tend to use that or do you give any antibiotics preoperatively or do you just give them postoperatively? Uh, yeah, we didn't get any preoperatively, but intraoperatively, yes, antibiotics, but no okay. steroids, given steroids. Just dexamethasone intraoperatively, yeah, not, not preoperatively. Right. This looks very yeah. inflamed, you can see, and it's very tight as well. So we're just going to have a look around. Have the suction. So you can see the polyps here. So you see how the, the whole mucosa of the nasal cavity is inflamed, not just, not just the sinuses, even the septal mucosa there. This is antrostomy, the middle major antrostomy here. This is within the ethmoid cavity, which is already open, there's polyps here. And the septal perforation that was repaired looks intact here, but it's quite tight anteriorly on this side, also on the other side. But I didn't want to try to do septoplasty because of the history of the perforation. We'll try to bypass this if we can. Let's have a free to have a look in this side. This bulge here, we'll probably have to do something about. But we'll just try to see beyond it first. So again, here you can see the roof of the ethmoids and the polyps there. So we may be able to just bypass this because we're going to create the window here anyway. So I'm going to have a look with the navigation because we're using navigation here. I don't know if this is showing in your screen or not. So I can't even see if there's a middle tab in it here. So it doesn't seem that she has a middle tab in it, but I am putting my navigation into the front of a smaller wreathes here. If you could see just there, next to the septum. There's no landmark at all. There's nothing here. There's no turbinate. So the front of smaller recess seems to be here. And this is the right side, the left side, sorry. And I'll go on the right side. Yeah, we're seeing it on the navigation screen now, Hesham. So we're just getting a view of that. I am in the other side here. So we can just see where I was just in the ethmoids here. If I go because of the tight septum, it's a bit difficult to show you, but here. Again, this are, I'm on these polyps here, but there's no middle term in it. So, so that is like toward the front of the recess there. 
There's no middle terminate. So I'm going to have to start by removing all these polyps first. Then I, I plan a lot from after that. So let's have a straight debrider. Uh, what's the speed on? Oh. No, we need to be on. We need to change that. Can somebody put it in a straight shot? Should be on a straight M5. We're just adjusting our debrider. No, not stylus. That's it. Let's put it a bit slower, 3000. That's it. Right, so now we're going to clean these polyps to start. So I can see what seemed to be a remnant of the superior tabernacle here, maybe. But the anatomy is completely gone, basically. So we'll just try to gently remove these polyps here. And luckily, we have a navigation here. It will be very useful in a case like this, because you can see there, so spinoid is here. These are like some of the posterior ethmoid cells in the back, just below the skull base, which is just there. It's just here. So we just gently clean this. Uh, you know, can we connect the frontal sinus sucker? Here's the skull base, you can see it up here. So you can see the dissection is not reached the skull base previously, so we'll remove these a little bit more. Okay, let's now have a navigation. I'm going to show you. So I'm posteriorly here. I can see the skull base. Yeah, so I've reached this. So I'm coming forward now. That's the safest way to do this. She also has some osteitis, so the bone will be a bit thick when you try to, to remove them. Let's have a navigation again, so we'll just find out where we are. I can see something looks like an agar, nasi or into the frontal sinus here. So we have to link all this. So that seems to be the remnant of the middle terminate. It's just there now. You can see it now. Okay, so that's here. We check that with the navigation probe. Seems to be about right. So frontal sinus coming that way in this area. Suction. So here it is. So we found the frontal sinus just there by following the landmarks, which what we have left, which is this tiny bit of turbinate. And this here, as I said, it's an organese that is half open there. 
I mean, I appreciate that anatomy is completely destroyed, but you can see the shape of here. So lateral nasal wall, having it, what's left of it. So I'm just going to drill a bit or debride a little bit of this mucosa to create a bit more exposure. So Hesham, do you use navigation on all your revision cases? Do you use it on any primary or all Lothrop? When would when would you get the navigation out? All the Lothrop, I always use navigation. And in fact, uh, when I started doing Lothrop many years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do it if I didn't have a navigation. And at the time, nobody in the UK was doing Lothrop endoscopically. So with the help of navigation, I was able to do them. And uh, especially with cases like this, with revisions, obviously, but even, I mean, obviously, most Lothrop will have some surgery before anyway. But any case of revision, I'd like to use navigation as well. I mean, you see this like here because of the destroyed anatomy, you don't, you are very near the orbit and very near everything else. If you don't have a navigation, it's a bit more risky. So we're checking all the time with the orbit and everything. So I'm going to debride a bit more of this. This is just, again, on the Latin nasal wall, but seems to be a remnant of the onsenate here, there. This is a remnant of the onsenate here. Let's have a 45 degree black sleep. Even Richard, actually, you mentioned about uh, your low props, you're doing it for many years now, and you're one of the first surgeons to do it in the UK. So mm -hmm. reflecting on your journey, uh, what things uh, have changed since uh, you started? Okay, the brother. Hisham. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure you heard the question. No, yeah. I haven't. Since, sorry. So since you started doing low props many years ago as one of the first surgeons in the UK, what things have changed? Uh, well, not a lot, to be honest. Just availability of more of the curved instruments, probably. Because I did the first low throb maybe in 2002, and I had the navigation then. So... <laughs> The techniques changed slightly because you, you put flaps nowadays, so we didn't put flaps in, uh, in the past, although sometimes I don't use the flaps anyway. And you have more of the curved debriders and so on. But otherwise, nothing, nothing much, to be honest. The technology, and definitely this fast birds and all that. that are recently so mainly, mainly it's with, with the equipment. The techniques are with the equipment. Yeah, see the orbit is so thin here. So if I, I'm pressing on the orbit, you see this is very thin, how it's moving here. So let's have yeah. a suction. So, so this is the front of sinus. So the main thing is that we have this. And I think I cleaned enough now, all the way from the skull base posterior to the front. So let's leave it here now and go on the other side for a bit and then come back. So let's have some patties. It's okay. Yes. So I'll leave this to dry out a bit and then come back after we clear the other side. So let's have the freers. I'm just going to push the septum out of the way. So you can see this is the side that is really tight. So we'll try to bypass that septal deviation because beyond that point is okay. We're still here. And it's actually bony, it's not cartilage, it's quite hard. This side seems to be a bit less inflamed somehow. Yeah, it's really narrow access on that side. You can see with that deviation. So 
less clear this now. So I've got the polyps here. Not much in this side, not like the other side. So we'll just clear them out. So we'll do the same. We'll try to find the skull base and just clear everything from back to front. Again, here is the very, very narrow sphenoid. She's got a lot of osteitis. Actually, let me show you on the scan. Can I have the navigation? You'll see the bones of this sphenoid. This is a sphenoid sinus. You look at that, how thickened they are. Can we show that image here? Yeah, we've got it. Hashem, we can see on screen. We've got you split side by side, the endoscopic and the uh, yeah, navigation so picture. See how thickened they are. So the sphenoid sinus is very small. Suction. Okay, so let's uh, try to use the navigation to see where the frontal sinus is in this side. The suction again, sorry. So, Hesham, a lot of people use the middle turbinate as part of their landmarks for creating their Lothrop cavity and where to do their septectomy and things. Without middle turbinates, what do you do and what would you use as your marks for where you make your Lothrop opening? Yeah, the only way is to use the navigation here because we have nothing. So I'll use the navigation to find uh, my landmarks. So here I'm in the skull base. So I'm going to go a bit anterior now to see it should be where it should be, where I expect it to be which somewhere here so it's roughly there so i just have to mark it with this navigation system that's the only way to confine it so what i'll do is i'm just going to keep clearing until we find some access to the frontal sinus which is about there and then i'll start opening things so let's have the brighter Uh, I may, I may, if this septum keeps getting in my way, I may just have to start working on it in a minute, but let's just try to clear a bit more. So I can find the skull base just there. Here it is. So I'll just clear these polyps on the skull base. And try to come more anteriorly here. My maxillary sinus, again, the maxillary sinus is always a good landmark. It's always nice because it's not going to go anywhere. So it's always nice to look at it. So at least you can tell where the floor of the orbit is. So our frontal sinus should be in this area, which we still can't see anything, as you can see, and there's no turbinate whatsoever. The other side, we found something, some remnants of the turbinate, but here, nothing. So I think what I'm going to do, because I can't find it, it's a bit tight here. I'm going to have to try to remove that part of the septum because it's going to be part of the window anyway. So let's have a look at it. Let's have the navigation to try to mark where we're going to open that septum. So navigation is very useful because you can find where the floor of the sinus is. So if you put it up, and try to find where the posterior part, which is roughly there, you can actually mark this bit on the septum. So I'm going to try to create like a little cut with this into the septum. See how tight it is, guys. It's not easy to put the scope with the navigation. The same 
area, but it's just there. So I'm creating a small cut onto the septum with the probe of navigation, right? Roughly where I want it to be. And I'm gonna create a window here. Let's have the freest first. And the suction. Try to get a, mucosa, a bit of mucosa from this area here. Let's have the straight sucker to actually to use first. Navigation probe again. Okay, let's see. Yeah, navigation is playing a little bit, so. Oh, let's just create the window anyway. Let's have a knife. Anisha, what's your plan for frontal? Are you planning to establish both the frontal recesses and then go no. lateral to medial? I'm going to probably go from the left side to this side because I, the left side, I managed to find it, but here it's, it's very tight because of the septum. And there's no landmark at all here. So I'll try from the other side. Uh, let's have a freeze. So I just lifted and it was a flap here. Okay, let's now have uh, scissors if you got them. Uh, no, the some stamburgers. So I'll just take this because if I can to see if I can use it later on or not. Uh, Blakesley. Uh, no, it's straight, but it doesn't matter. So here's a piece of mucosa. Just keep that one for us. And Prius. So this part of the septum is interestingly bony. It's supposed to be cartilage, but it's very tight. Remember, she had multiple surgeons. She had a repair of a perforation of the septum. So it's quite hard. Uh, let's have a navigation again. Yeah, so I'm pointing at the front of the sinus just about here. So we know roughly where it is, but we really need to, uh, to, kind of, to find it from the other side. I'm going to remove a bit more of that mucosa here and try to remove some of that bone. 
let's have the debrider. So I'm just enlarging the window really because I need a quite a big window because of that septal deviation. Let's have the freers. It is very bony, actually. <coughs> and I'm going to look at the other side now, because I've, I've removed the because I just want to make it equivalent on the other side. Let's have a tilly forceps just to get it back out. So here we have a turbinate, which is, in a way, is good. Let me get part of the turbinate. So normally you landmark. This part of the turbine, let's have a suction, just to show you again here. Normally, landmark is you go beyond, here's that what's left of the turbine, it's just there. Let's have a uh, prayer to show you. So, normally, landmark is, see what's left of the turbine is here. More, normally, you just go beyond that turbine and you create a window from about four millimeter, five millimeter beyond the attachment of the turbinate all the way anterior for about two centimeters and down two two back. So we'll try to do this here. We'll mark it and try to do it as well. Let's have the navigation again. Uh, Hashem here, you're using the inside out. So you're starting with a frontal recess and widening it up. Do you ever use the kind of outside in where you start drilling on the frontal beak? and? What would be, why would you want to use one technique over the other? I do, I use this from inside, like from find the frontal recess and go when it's very complicated, like this one. The ones that you have, like a nicer anatomy, I just go to the floor, it's much quicker from the frontal beak itself, from the middle. After you create the window, the first thing you do the window, and then I go straight okay. for the, the better anatomy. But this one is quite uh, tight. And there's no landmark. So I'm, I'm now marking the window on this side. You can see I'm just putting my navigation right up here where the posterior part of the frontal sinus is, then going down, and then you follow that anteriorly here. So knife. So we'll clear this. So I try to get some mucosa from here. And normally, the level of the, of the flap goes at the like lower border of the turbinate, but obviously we don't have it, so I'm just estimating it here. Really? So I try to get this mucosa out. Quite scarred because she had uh, surgery with flaps for repair of perforations, where it tears a little bit. But still, we have a bit of mucosa, which is not bad. So here it is. Uh, let's have the scissors. And uh, Blakesley, straight Blakesley. Uh, okay, sorry, it's still there. Oh, let's have the scissors again, sorry. This is a nice piece, this one. It's better. 
Uh, no, can I have a straighter one or to the left? This is a nicer piece than the other side. So a nice piece to keep. So now let's see if we can create the window by removing the cartilage or the bone here, or that bone really. So see that exposure here. Quantum sinus is here somewhere, and that should lead us to the other side that we created as well. We could check it again with the navigation. Can I have the navigation probe? So the posterior extension is just there, just where the Lord of the sinus or the posterior wall of the sinus and here and then opens there. So let's have the freers. Maybe I will remove this. Actually, the brother for a second. So now let's try to remove this part of the window, the bony. It's actually bone, which is unusual in a young person like this. Usually it's just cartilage, but it's completely calcified. So we're probably gonna have to drill it. Let's have a chomper. This is very hard. So I remember here we are just under the nasal bone. So you're not at the risk of causing fracture into the skull base because you're very anterior here, but you still have to be careful. So it's best to cut it than pull it basically. So I'm using a forward cutter. Here you go. You can see how it's just bone here. Okay, good. Let's have a bleak sleep. So you start, is, you start seeing the window now. It's always good to do that window early because then you can see where you are and you get access to the other side because without this window, it's impossible. Yeah, this is a, really the most important step of your loss of. You have to open the window first. So I'm just looking from the other side, just seeing my window. It's there. So it is connecting. So just remove all the hard tissue, the bony tissue. And when it's complete, when you can see both middle terminate, which we don't have, but we will we'll do something else, then you know you've opened a nice window. There's sufficient view to work from both sides. So we can start. We're seeing, we're looking at the other side, but we still can't see where the front of the is, but we will see in a minute. We'll have to enlarge a bit more. So let's have a back biter. Now, this perforation is quite high and it's quite posterior. See, you can't see it when you look straight in the nose. You have to look up. So it's away from the air current. So it doesn't tend to crust or cause problems with the airway. So, so it is okay. It's just bony here. Okay, let's give you that again. So a bit more to remove. Let's have it again. See, it's all bony there. Here it is. And suction. Just trim a bit of mucosa just to get a bit more space from that window. So I've removed a lot of the bone now. So just don't stop making the window until you make sure it's big enough. 
So we just have to keep checking it until you know that you could see everything. I can start seeing both sides as you can see there. So just clear all this. Until you reach right up in the floor of the sinus, which is about here. So it's still a bit of cartilage to remove here. So if we start looking, we can actually see it from both sides now. It's something that looks more useful for us. Let's just remove this bit of uh, cartilage here. Let's have the Blakesley, straight Blakesley. And the septum now is getting going out of our way a little bit. So let's keep this bit just in case. So this is this is this seemed to be a bit of cartilage here. It's a bit better. Or is it bone? I think it's still bone. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is our window coming nicely. I think it's almost there. We will clean everything in a minute and show you a bit more, but let's just get all the bits out. Let's have it the brighter. just to clear everything because all the area that you want to clear is where you're going to create that drilling. I mean, you could almost see where the lot is going to be. You're going to start in the front of the ethmoid recess like this, drill this, which is the floor of the sinus, and then join it to the other side. So you see how everything is very inflamed here and not very friendly. The polypoid here, but we're probably not going to remove a lot in this area. So I think it's almost enough. Okay, so let's have a look with the navigation now. So we're looking at front of sinus in this side, here, and that's the beak. This is the beak here, there. If we put the navigation in the middle here, that's like the floor of a sinus and then to sinus septum. So we want to drill that way, forward like this, and then like this, and then like this, connect to find this one. And this one is here as well. So we sort of found it as well. But obviously you see how horribly inflamed and bloody and everything. It's not the usual nice one that you want to do, but we're doing it for you. Uh -huh. uh, can I have the back biter? So I'm removing a little bit of that cartilage in the bottom because you don't like to have a lot of exposed cartilage. So, and I, I say again, without navigation, it will be harder. Navigation is very useful to confirm where you are, just to find out and confirm where you are. So just remove this piece of cartilage so we don't have exposed cartilage anymore. And that makes your window big enough. A window that is not big enough will lead to closure or stenosis of the of the lothrop and will crust and will know you all so much. It will be on your way. Okay, let's have a irrigation now. Can I just have a 45 Blakesley for a second? Just remove this bit here. Okay. Uh, if that is all right, uh, Dr. Satish is just explaining about his case, so we'll briefly visit him and come back by the time we prepare uh, for that. No? Esham, we're just going to go to India for their case introduction, then we'll come back and join you. Okay, Doc. Thanks. Are we off? Okay. Yeah, shall we connect to uh, Nagpur, please? This is a horrible case. Yeah, we, you're still on, Hesham. Where is Priscilla? This is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> we can still hear you, Hesham. <laughs> yeah, we're almost there anyway. We're going to finish. <laughs>
Okay, studio, can I connect to Nakpur, please? Hello, Dr. Satish. So what I'm going to show is, for the sake of demonstration here, we'll remove this and we'll be using pre lacrimal approach yeah. to marsupialize this region. Okay. okay. Yeah. pre lacrimal means the access would be anterior to the lacrimal system without damaging it. There are two approaches. One is the modified denture. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. I think it's not. I think accurate. it's not accurate. Okay, Hello, Hashem, we're, Hashem, back, we're you. back with you. We can see what you're doing now. We were just in Jaipur, and they're about to do a pre-lacrimal approach for uh, maxillary sinus. So they were showing us their scans, but we're now back with the modified Lothrop function. So it looks like you've got the frontal sinus ostium there. Is that right? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we've so I'm here, I'm looking now on the left yep. front of the recess. I've enlarged yep. it. So, what I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go forward, yeah, until I reach the intersinus septum, which will be about here, and then I'm gonna go through the right front of sinus to join them together. So, right, I'm looking here underneath, do I have a suction from the sinus? So I put the yeah, have you got the frontal recess on the right side yet, or you're just going to uh, yeah, well, go yeah. to it through the left from the left? Yeah. But it's not as as well defined. So it's it's not as well defined okay. as yeah. on the left side. Sorry. So it's just there. It's a bit tight here. So because of this, I'm just going to start on the left. So it'll be okay. easier to do. And Hashem, just out of interest, what angle scope are you using at the moment? You're still on a zero? Or have you switched yeah. to a 30 or 45? Yeah, I'll, sh I'll switch to a 45 soon, but not, not yet. Okay. Uh, let's have an approach. I'm going to show you if we can see the navigation. So here, it's not very accurate now. I should be pointing to the frontal beak about there. Let's test it. Stopped working for some reason. No, it's not working anymore. Now look, it's a bit off. But off now. So we need to readjust. Let's have the. So I'm going to open further. So now I'm using both nostrils. So my scope is in the right nostril and my debride is in the left one. So I can basically. Open things a bit further here. Uh, let's have a Blake's leaf 45 degrees. Suction. At the rider. Seems to be a cell. I have a frontal sinus seeker. And 
instruction. Okay, let's have a break here 45. Not uncommon entities. Still not under. So I've enlarged the front sinus from right inside now. Uh, maybe I can now change the 45 so I can show you the cavity. I'm going to change the 45 degrees. You can show you inside the front of the sinus. And then I'll start drilling. Balance. Right, so let's have suction now. You don't have the other front to sinus sucker that was like the light goes from the side. It'd be easier the, in the scope. Right? Yeah, the scope. So look at the front to sinus inside. Yeah, look at all this polypoid tissue here. So in a minute now, I'm going to start drilling. So in a minute, I'm going to change into my Midas drill which is a faster drill. So just remove that polypoid tissue here. Is that the 40 degree debrider there or 60? So here are the, this is the cavity of the front of the sinus. This is right up there. And you can almost see that we not very far from the anterior wall. So let's have the Midas. So I'm gonna use the drill. The faster drill, this, the Midas drill. We need to change it there. We'll and what thing. sort of burr do you use on the drill, Hashem? Do you use a diamond or a cutting and what size? Cutting. Cutting. Okay. Four millimeter cutting. Okay. Four millimeter cutting. Okay. That's it. Yeah, perfect. Let's have the suction. So this is very fast drill, so you have to be very careful with it. So don't start with the maximum speed. And the problem with these, you don't have suction, but they have irrigation. So let's see if irrigation is working. Not yet. For the trainees who are watching, uh, I would suggest yeah. uh, if you are in the initial stages, so use a diamond because it's a little bit of a margin of error for that. Uh, cutting is okay for. Uh, Expert experience surgeons like uh, Hisham. But uh, do use cutting if you got a, a enough wide space. But for a narrow recess like this, uh, uh, for surgeons in the initial stages, the uh, diamond will be a better drill. You agree, Hisham? Yeah? Okay. So this is a very fast drill, so you have to be careful. So just actually it's too much irrigation here, so let's just decrease it a bit. So see, I'm not going full speed, I'm just gauging my speed first, just drilling forward. And if you see what I'm doing, I have my scope in the right nostril and the drill in the left. And then we can swap again. This is bringing my opening forward. So I'm drilling the frontal beak now. And I have my suction in the other nostril. I just leave it there. Nobody's holding it. Because otherwise, it's too much irrigation in way. So now I'm putting both of them on one side. how carefully is working just on the beak and avoiding any contact with the posterior wall. Just the front of the beak. You're feeling the reach and flattening it down. Just like you drill uh, the master oh. ventrum. So here we are. So we're already opening 
widely in the front of the sinus. We need to drill here laterally so we get to the subcutaneous tissue or the skin, like PJ1 will say. So this area here, laterally. So I'm going to get this. So you need the widest possible loss drop or opening. So just clearing this soft tissue from it. And I'm not pressing full speed. With this full speed, the drill will just go very too quickly for you. So if you're not sure, use a diamond burr. I like using the cutting burr. I can control the speed like a car. Just press a little bit and you don't go full speed. So we started to see more into the front of the sinus. And when you see the frontal wall, then you know you reached your, your level. I can see it already. Look at that. So it means we can go toward the right side in a minute. But I'm going to just drill laterally first. That bone on the lateral wall there, I need to thin it a bit more here, a little bit here. And if you think about where this bone is, it's just underneath the nasal bone. So if I put your navigation, this, uh, I don't know if it's accurate enough, but we'll... Okay, so it's just roughly there. Yeah, maybe it's okay now. Or is this not moving? No, no, look at it. So it's not accurate. It needs to be registered. So maybe we'll, we'll just re-register it. Let's do it. We're just uh, doing a navigation again so I can show you. Okay. That's the infrared navigation you're using there, Hesham, is it? With the surface matching rather than it being a um, um, magnetic one. That's right, yeah. I, uh, I always use surface marking. It's quicker. Uh, the electromagnetic may be a bit accurate, but it has a lot of wires and cables and takes a long time to register. So I've always preferred that. Check landmark. Can I check? Is good? Yeah, it's good now. So we'll now have a look with the navigation to show you. I guess it shows that you can't just rely on a navigation. You have to keep checking all the time. And that's, if I, if I didn't know where I was, I said, oh yeah, here we are, and <laughs> go for it. But obviously I yeah. knew it was. So if I go where that bone I wanted to drill, just about here. So see where it's pointing. It's inside the front of sinus, but also, I'm just gonna put it from the other side to show you a bit. So here's the navigator. So that's the bone I wanna drill here laterally. It should be under the nasal bones. Yeah, see the nasal bone is just underneath it. That's where it is, although it's not moving. So that's where we're drilling. It's a bit lateral, but that's it's gonna get. Let's try again. Yeah, let's try inside. Still not perfectly accurate. So, but we know where we are. So let's have a drill. So we'll go and drill a bit more here. Can I have some more anti-fog, please? Anti-fog. And let's check if we've reached the skin yet. Not yet. So I'm pushing in the skin from outside to see if it's moving, but not yet.
So always move with the drill. Don't put it in one point and just drill because it will just create a, a deep. Now we've reached the skin. I can see it here. So when I'm pushing, it's a little bit of movement. It's not very obvious yet, so we'll do a bit more. Why do I do this? Why do I have to reach the skin of the subcutaneous tissue? Then you know there's no bone there to grow back. That's the idea. And then also it indicates that there's no more you could drill. Yeah, it's quite thick, so we're doing it gently just to make, to make sure we're not doing too much. Okay, more, more, more. In the scope. So we have a big opening here. I'm just gonna show you the other side, then we'll go back to this. So let's see if we can go to the other side now. So we know that the other side is just gonna be somewhere here, somewhere there. The other front of the sinus is just here. So we could just go from here and drill again and back there, forward like this, and then join them, or we can go from left to right. Let's have the navigation probe for a second. So we show you this, this is the front of sinus on the right side. Yeah. Not accurate, but it is, let's have the curette. So we could just bring this bone a bit forward here. Let's have the Blakesley 45. Suction. So the bit tighter in this side, the front of the but the bone is not very thick, so you can just remove it a little bit like this. So let's have again the 45 Blixie. So we're already seeing into the front of the sinus, already starting to make that shape of a lothrop procedure. which is connecting these two sinuses together, basically. So it feels a bit tight. Uh, if you look at the scan, there was actually like another bar there or another like wall. Let me have a navigation to show you. So maybe that's what I'm hitting here. somewhere there but i'm gonna come that side now i'm gonna drill this way to here so if i'm putting this this is a thick bone of the middle uh, septum or the sinus septum here i'm gonna go through it let's have the suction so all the situation will be sucked out I'm trying to shake the blood out, but sometimes it doesn't come out. Sometimes I use the uh, the sheath, which is the 
endoscope. Sometimes I only use it actually for lotropes. I don't use it for anything else. But we haven't used it today. So because with lotrop, you're working from below. So actually underneath the drill. So that's why you get a lot of things, blood and so on, that comes in your uh, affect your uh, endoscope. So we can start seeing more and more on the other side now. So I lift my sucker there, just staying there. Yeah, so uh, one day they'll be invented, one of these uh, fast drills with suction as well. You saw the scan as well. They are the left side, the sinus is bigger. So, can we see the intestinal septum? So, let's have a look inside now. So, we're just below it here. Look, that's it. So, we'll continue drilling. I'm just going to point it here. We put this here. So, I'm in the intestinal septum. See exactly where I am now. Okay. So, I'll see the right sinus is much smaller than the left one. So let's open that now, continue with the drill. So that's where endoscope would have been useful here, but we, we're okay. No, I can't put it on now, is it? Just this bit when, uh, when I'm below the drill anyway. So a thin bone here, so I'm just going to remove a bit more. Let's have the bleak screen, so 45. I'm trying to see if I'm close to the right side, you can connect them easier from the right to left or just continue as I am. Section again. Um, you could try some of the electronic first they have uh, suction. Okay, well, I was thinking like 20, 30 tables. No, I'm going to have to mix it here. Yes. 
Yeah, we we'll soon will use the after I do this that we we'll use the finesse bar. So I'm almost there now. Because this bone, see how thick this is. Use the other ones you take forever. Yeah, so that's good. We're almost there. So suction. So soon when I reach the other one, because this bone is so thick, I could use the other drills. This is the right side. I could use the other drills, uh, which is a bit slower, but I, because the bone is so thick, I prefer to use this faster drill. When I completely open this, then I'll refine things with the finesse burr, which is the one that connects to the normal debrider and has suction in it. Here we are. So now we've got connection. Will it have suction? So see that other septum here. The sinus had two septums, this one and this one. You can see that in the scan. So obviously we'll bring this down as well soon, but this is the intersinus septum. This is another septum into the front of spine. So let's drill that one, finish it first. Okay, so let's get ready with the finesse because now I'm opening it. So now I have a big opening, but I need to enlarge it more. So let me show you first, and then we'll go, we'll change bars now. So let's Jim, for some of the people just tuning in, can you just go through where your landmarks are now and show people the posterior table, anterior table, and lateral walls so they can see what's going on? Okay, great. So this is through my septal window now. Yeah. Here is the left frontal sinus. This is the posterior wall of the frontal sinus. And this is the roof and the anterior wall is here. And this is the right. intersinus, or what's left of it. And this is the right frontal sinus here. It has a laminated wall here, another wall there, just like a small one here, there. So that's the rest of the cavity of the frontal sinus on the right side. And this is the posterior wall here. And anterior wall is just... We can't see it yet. So I'm going to remove this, and it will be into the frontal sinus. This here, part of the posterior wall, which we're going to drill down, because we want to reach the anterior, the most anterior olfactory nerve, which is going to be about here. Here. Yeah. This is and the nerve. See there? That's coming through a small cavity here. This one there. Yeah, so that's not... nice. So we can drill this bit, this, this bit as well. So I'm going to drill this bit more first on the right side, open it further. Yeah. And then we'll, uh, we'll change into the other drill now. Is it? No, it's not changing. You have to spray. Somebody has to press this. We'll just change the, the drills now. Uh, no, it should be 12 or, or, or 30,000. We need a drill. So I'll press from here. Yeah, put up. It's ready. Perfect. So uh, we've got the drill now. So this is the curved one. So this is 40 degrees. This one, obviously, it just connects to the normal debrider, so it has suction in it. A 
And like I said, I could drill a little bit here as well. Can we decrease the irrigation a little bit? No, down. Yeah. Uh, maybe a bit more suction. So, you can see now, this is nicely open on the left. We need to open the right side a bit more. We'll just continue with it. So, if you look from here, let's have a drill. So again, my camera is still on the left, on the right nostril, sorry. And my drill is on the left side. I always have to be careful when you drill this. I'm not pulling on full speed. Remember I said the, optic, the, the first olfactory nerve is just there. So we just adhere to it. And that's again, the intersinus septum we we'll drill it a little bit more. And I showed you earlier, there's like a lamella here. Gently take it off as well. So the idea is to create a very large uh, stoma basically so as large as possible and then we're going to reach the skin subcutaneously both sides I'm going to now put my scope in the left nostril so I can drill more onto that right side so I can see a little bit more into it see how smaller the right sinus compared to the left one because the intersinus septum is toward the right side you can see the intersinus septum, you can see where the right sinus is. So we need to drill a bit more here. So let's have a drill. Getting there nicely now. So we're almost we almost opened the whole thing, but not yet. You need to get the maximum opening. Suction. So every now and then we check. I need to drill a bit more here. Okay, drill. So I'm now putting my drill into the right nostril. This is unusual. Don't always have to do that while my endoscope is in the left nostril. Just to drill anteriorly. So the whole purpose, as I said earlier again, just creating the largest possible hole. So 
let's check this. Did I smile? <laughs> Excellent. See, now we almost have symmetricals. But remember, obviously, the size of the sinus itself is asymmetric anyway. Hesham, do you notice a difference between the previous 12K drills and the new 30Ks that you're using for the finesse? Definitely, much better. Uh, well, the finesse obviously is much uh, slower, but it's good. It's comparing to the 4K drills that we used to have, this is much faster, double the speed, more than double the speed. So it's a lot faster. So it is much more uh, quick, really. Can I have the Blake sleeve? I'm going to remove that. Bit of mucus because they're here. Okay. Uh, for, for divide. Yeah, it's a lot faster. Take this. So Hisham, that was a great cavity. So in the meantime, can we just uh, check on Nakpur whether they're doing a modified denkers? So we just yeah, catch up with them and be back. So let's have the drill again. Hesham, we're just switching to India, okay? So we'll be back with you in a minute. Next 10 minutes or so. Bye. Hello, Dr. Satish. So we were back to you. So can you just uh, take us through the case that we have just uh, completed? Uh, looks like they are nearly finishing that with another modified denkers. Yeah, it looks like they're just closing the flap Thank again. Thank you so today. much, Satish Jain, Thank you, Satish. Sir. Wonderful demonstration throughout the day. Sir, thank you for your time, your attention. So and obviously, we'll, we'll... thanks for uh, Satish. me for this. It's That's always a pleasure event. to have you in Nagpur. And we'll meet personally at the bank now. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, See may this I one stitch. Put one more. May I request Nandu, sir, to please step forward to felicitate our moderators, Dr. R.B. Deshmukh, sir. So... Okay. President Ewa is coming to okay. you to felicitate you. <laughs> I think, sorry, we probably missed the case. They're just about finishing. After an exhaustive so, back to London, please. Huh? Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Dr. V.P. Nikhar. Uh, there we are. We can hear you now. That's a really nice wide opening there. Everything. Now we've got the big space here. So that intersinus septum that was here loaded as well. The other one there. So that's all this is the right front of sinus now. It's all open. I think that's my limit for posteriorly as well. 
Yeah. So, it's very uh, asymmetrical, much bigger on the left than the right, that frontal, those frontal sinuses, aren't they? Just a little bit of cleaning here, and then I am going to put the mucosa flaps, and then I'm going to cover them with a the propel. Uh, let's have the 45 Blakesley. Piece of bone here. Here on. Okay, so here we go now. So this is the cavity, let's wash it. Before that, I'm just gonna trim this bone. You can't leave bone exposed like this. So can I have the chomper? Just trim that piece of bone. Okay, let's have some irrigation now. And suction in the nose. Another one. Oops, it's blocked, I think. Yeah, it's a bit blocked. Okay, now. Okay, so let's uh, have a look. So just clean it first. I will probably need your suction again, that one you have. So I just cleaned it, wash it, wash it out completely, make sure there's no bits swimming around. Oh, it looks fine. Take them out. All these little bits of bone, cartilage, whatever. All the bone is covered. Get some blood clots here. Just clean them out. All the bone dust, you don't want it to be there, obviously, because it will get infected and cause you problems. So we we'll try to put some mucosa on the exposed bone now. So this bits of mucosa, I'll try to put them here. So let's have the mucosa. So that big piece of mucosa that I had with the Blake's D45. And we'll try to put it in the anterior wall. And then I need the propel to open the propel. So we'll go like that. Put this here and then try to move around. So let's have the freers. So if it doesn't stick, then don't do it because otherwise you block your. Because this because it's quite edematous actually. So we'll try to cover this. The surface is that one, like this. Cover that bone here. Now, can I have the frontal sinus curate? So we'll push it like this. So you're depending on surface tension here that will keep it stuck to the bone there. It is obviously thick, but we'll see. Maybe we can squeeze it in a bit. Yeah, that's not bad like this. We're going to try to open it with the propeller as well. Uh, let's have, have the seeker. Let's have the seeker. The small one, yeah? And then see if we adjust a little bit more. It's very, very thick mucosa, which is in a way good, but also bad because it can narrow things for you. You don't want that. But really the mucosa, if you manage to get like grafts like this, it will decrease your osteitis and you get less of narrowing from 
uh, from the bone. So let's see if we can stick this like this. Yeah, so it's a pre-mucosal graft. Oops. That's okay. Let's have the freer. So it's sitting like this. I'm going to push it up, hopefully, with the propel. We'll see. Uh, Seeker again. The propel obviously will decrease the edema because it decreases the steroid. So let's have it. So here is the propel. This is the introducer. Put it there and just opens up. So let's see if we can just go. So I don't have a propel contour. So this is not the specific frontal sinus one. So we'll just use this one anyway. Just put it there where that graft is. See what happens, we push it right up and stays there and will hopefully keep our graft stuck. It does that. So we can push it a bit. Can I have the seeker? It's good, I think it's working. It's holding it in place. Can we have a picture? Yeah, so it's holding our graft in place. Thank you very much. So it should be okay. Yeah, this graft of oblige should shrink. This will keep secreting uh, steroid mometazone for a month. So we'll decrease the edema, hopefully decrease the osteitis and swelling and everything else. So that's it, done. That looks great. Thank you very much, um, Hesham. They got a tricky case lined up for you today. So... Luckily, we managed now, so I think it's okay. Thank you it very looks much. It's pretty good. No, excellent. Thank you. That looks really nice.